Hey, what's going on guys? It's Franklin here and I just want to thank you all for being a part of my blog. My blog has grown at a very fast rate in the last two weeks and with that comes way more questions. So what I'm doing is I'm answering questions in this video and the main question I've been getting this week is pretty much how do I do free research? Now I don't do free keyword research myself at the moment. Uh, I use paid programs, but I used to do free uh, keyword research. So I'm going to show you how I used to do it. I'm going to show you how my friends are doing it. Uh, I've got a friend that does it this way still today and he's making uh, about $6,000 a month off his website. And this way works just fine. You don't really need uh, products that, that you're going to pay for like Longtail Pro and all that. I mean, it does help and I do use them, but I only use them because use them it speeds things up for me, okay? These products take the same information that we're doing now and just puts it in a program for you. So I'm going to show you how we do it, and it's pretty simple. In this video, we're going to need a product and just some keyword research. I'm going to show you exactly how I do my keyword word research. Uh, basically, I, the only difference is I just don't use Google AdWords uh, Keyword Planner anymore, but that's the free way to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Basically, you want a product, right? So whatever your product is, whether it's a, a, a service, a physical product, an affiliate product, you know, uh, a business like web hosting or whatever, you've got to get your product in front of your audience, okay? So you've got to rank it. But the problem nowadays is ranking is a lot, a lot harder than it used to be. But it doesn't really have to be that hard if you uh, dig deep and you find some good keywords that are kind of low search volume. And I'm going to explain that to you uh, now. So what we're going to do is find a product. And I'm going to go to... Well, I'm, I'm going, I'm at a, a thing called Offer Vault, right? And this is a CPA office, so click per action and stuff like that. And I'm not, I'm not a professional with click per action, but I do have experience with uh, ranking sites like this because I have helped friends and stuff like that. Well, not really SEO ranking for these, but I've helped friends set them up and do articles and all that type of stuff. So what I do is I go to Diet. Trending searches, number one. You can go to whatever you like, really, whatever you're looking for. And I'm going to explain a couple of things here. So the, the ones with a sale means that you get a commission from a sale. And the ones from a lead means you get a commission every time you send a lead to that website. So if that person puts an email address or a, uh, a zip code, then you get some money from that. And I don't uh, do CPA well, I, I, I'm starting to do it, and I'm, and but the thing is, we, um, me and my people that I work with, my friends and stuff like that, we go for big, big payouts, right? Uh, usually over thirty dollars. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm going to base my video around these. So what I've done is I've found a product, and I'm going to do this product because my friend that is doing a product that's kind of similar. Not exactly the same, but similar. He's making around about $6,000 a month off this exact method. Okay, this is exactly how he does his keyword research. He doesn't mind me telling you guys. He said he's, he's fine with that because uh, he's, you know, he's, I'm not, it's not like I'm telling you his exact product. But this is, is exactly how he does it. I help him with his keyword research quite often. And first, we'll just look at this product. Okay, so this product is a fat burning cream or pill or something. Pills, fat burning pills. And what, what it does is you put the, a link to this in your landing page or your website or your blog and the customer comes here and fills out this information and you get paid for the information that get, gets submitted, right? Now, what we want to do is some keyword research. So I'm going to copy this real quick. You can copy the whole thing if you like, but I'm just going to copy this because this is the base keyword I'm going to be working on. Now you want to go to Google and put in Google AdWord Planner. It will come up. This is the best free software. I mean, most of the other free softwares use Google AdWords as their metrics anyway. So, you know, you better just to go right to the source, right? So we're going to put in our keyword. I usually just stay on United States for everything. But if you're going to target a specific country like France or Germany or, or whatever, then you need it's best just to change it so you get more of an accurate result. Uh, leave everything else like it is. I don't really see any reason for changing it. What this does is it brings up our keywords. Now, I just want to uh, explain something really quick. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to bring up all the highest ones. Now, uh, we don't rank 
I don't rank for any high keywords, high high uh, high volume keywords, and the reason is it's just too hard. I had a guy email me the other day. He said, "Hey Frank, Franklin, can you help me? I've been trying to rank this for the last four months. Can't do it. Nothing's really happening." And I said, "Yeah, sure. You send me the information. I'll help you out." What it was is he was trying to rank for a search term that was twenty three thousand searches per month, and the thing is, he just he just had the impression that you go out, you find a keyword, and you just you know you just rank for it or, or whatever. That's kind of the impression he's been getting from other people or other things he's read. And he'd wasted all this time uh, optimizing his page for this one specific keyword. He didn't have any other keywords in there, uh, you know. And I just said to him, "Dude, I've done some research on your keyword." The top 10 is completely dominated by massive sites. You're probably never going to rank for this, okay? You need to change your strategy. And so I helped him out for a few weeks, and I I showed him exactly what I'm going to show you here. And now he's 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 not ranking for any of the keywords that I've that I've that I've uh, helped him out with, but he's starting to kind of see some results now. So what I'm trying what I'm going to show you in this video is instead of trying to rank for one massive keyword or two or three massive keywords, and by massive I'm talking you know a thousand, nineteen hundred. This works good for niche, micro niche websites, but I'm talking about building up authority websites or building up a, a kind of a website where you're going to be updating it every now and then, okay, and you're going to be putting up more content. So what I do is I go to the lowest, start at the lowest, okay, and I want to, I go to usually between 50 and 200, or to stop here. I get a whole bunch of keywords, I get between 10 and 20. To start off with okay and I just get whatever is related to my topic whatever I think fits it best long short it doesn't matter so you get them I put them in a list now what I've done is I've only I've done a small list here that you can see and I put the numbers of searches next to it just to speed things up what I do is I start going through my keywords and it can, you just get a whole bunch of you don't have to uh, be specific on this and now I do my search term and I've done it here and what I want to do, I use a tool called Moz Toolbar, and this brings up the authority. Now, if you start seeing a whole bunch of green, it's probably not a good idea to try and rank for it. And, and But, you know, this isn't too bad. I could probably rank, if I was to do this, I could rank above this one, and, you know, there's a few that I could probably beat. But the thing is, you don't, you don't, you need to look at the competition. So out of this, I found a few sites that kind of interest me. This one here uh, looks pretty good. Right, this is some. This is a competitor, and then we've got this one. This was actually from another keyword, but it's the same thing, right? And he's just throwing a whole bunch of keywords in here. This is see, this is old school. This guy probably made this a really long time ago. And then we have this. Now this here is a perfect example of an affiliate site. Okay, he's got everything that looks good. This is his main product here, and then he's got here what we call a bait method. And this bait method works. Uh, it's attracting people to his number one product, right? So this product here, he makes most of his commission off, I'm guessing. These ones he makes a little bit of commission off. He puts best choice, he puts the price high, and he puts the reviews high. And then what he does is he puts the price low, reviews low here, on the same one here. And what this does is it kind of gives the people the idea that this one over here is the best. So a lot more people are buying this product here than that product. I know this because I've been doing this uh, with some of my luxury items, you know, I'll put three luxury resorts and I'll and I'll do the exact same thing. So what I'm getting at here is you've got to analyze your competition and you're probably thinking, well, why would I want to rank in a keyword where there's other affiliates ranking? Because that's the easiest way to do it. You want to rank in uh, keywords where aff affiliates are because it, it, it just shows that it's possible for you to rank affiliate, affiliate websites. You don't want to rank in keywords that have uh, websites like Massive Health Magazine, websites with a big authority and health forums, uh, you know, like bodybuilding forums and all that, because this is kind of related to that, I guess. You want to rank in uh, search terms that have review sites and sites like this, okay? And that's the thing. A lot of people are trying to rank for the ones that have all the authority sites and it doesn't it doesn't work. I mean, it may have a lot of search volume and you're trying to get up in there, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And it's the same with this. Sometimes my techniques work and sometimes they don't, but I have more success with these techniques than I do the old school techniques. So what I've done here is I've gone through this guy's uh, website and it will take a while, but I look through and I get a whole bunch of other keywords and I want to rank for this guy's keywords because 
he's ranked for them. So it's probably not that hard considering he's an affiliate site. But what I do is I do research first to make sure I actually can rank for it. And I'll put this in here. And I'll do a search for it. And it has 70 views, uh, 70 searches per month. Now you probably think that's not a lot, and it isn't a lot. But the thing is, if you're selling, I'm still, right now we're searching for product that sells at $52 per lead. If you get two clicks, uh, two leads from this uh, keyword in a month, that's $104. You imagine if you have uh, four or five keywords ranking for your article that has the same search volume, then so that's seven, 70 times five, and then you take that two, those two leads and you times that by five, right? That's 10 leads possible. So that's $52 times 10. So it all adds up. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is we're gonna use a bunch of keywords to optimize our article to rank for uh, a certain amount of keyword phrases. So I'm gonna show you right here. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of these sites. We don't need them now, but these are just examples of sites that uh, you could kind of check out and see what they're up to, see what their uh, search, see what their keywords are and stuff like that. Now, we're gonna get out of here. I might just keep one up in case we need it. So what I've done is I've got four keywords here, right? Four keyword phrases. Now the thing is, a lot of people normally just throw the keywords in like this. They'll throw the whole thing in. And what that does is, see this main keyword here? This is put this keyword in here four times already and you know and Google will see this as over optimization if you do it too much okay it's this keyword right here so what I, and what I'm going to show I'm just going to refresh this uh, refresh this real quick because my um, things not scrolling down properly this is my SEO plugin now you see I've put one of my keywords in here it only shows up in the content for that specific keyword it doesn't show up for any of these others that have the same keyword phrase in it. What this means is a lot of people when they're optimizing their uh, articles, they think, oh yeah, so I've got my, con let's just say I've got it mentioned in my content once. Let's just say that's 1%. But what they don't realize is they've mentioned this word so many times in other parts of the article and in the titles and in the meta description that this doesn't pick it up. It only picks up that exact one they put in there. Now, sure, you could put this in here, okay, just this, but we're not trying to rank just for that. We're actually trying to rank for this whole thing. So, you know, there's there's a new way people are doing it, and I'm going to show you. Instead of over-optimizing with all this, this is what this is what I do. So, see how it says how to use, I don't know how to pronounce that, so I'm just going to say how to use pill to lose weight. I put, when using pill to lose weight, is it a natural extract that could help with diabetes? Research, research shows that this extract has no side effects. What I've done is I've used my main, I want to use this as kind of a main keyword. So I've used that here, parts of it. Then what I've done is I've used the word natural and that comes down here. So this is natural. I've used extract and that's used twice down here. Oh, that's used twice in here, sorry. So I've used it here and there. I've used diabetes and I've also used side effects. Now I've taken a part out of each of these. Now what that does is Google doesn't exactly, Google doesn't use this all the time for its search results. In fact, it doesn't do it much at all now for me anyway. What Google does is it takes the searches, the search results from the whole article, it goes through your whole article and it brings up what best fits your customer's search term, okay? And I'm gonna uh, give you a bit of an idea. So I'm gonna put, uh, I'm going to get a keyword here, sorry. I'm going to get this one here. I'm going to copy it into Google. And it comes up with, uh, see, it comes up with natural, some yeah, natural extract, uh, natural here, and uh, natural. What we can do, we can add in best. And it comes up with best. So what it's doing is it's grabbing just random words from the article. So you don't have to actually have your specific keyword. So you don't actually have to have your this specific keyword in the article, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense. It's a bit hard for me to explain uh, kind of without doing a full article. But what, what I'm saying is I, basically with this line here, I have a potential to rank for all of these without using all of these. So I could rank for this here this here, this here, this here. And let's say we add three more, okay? So these are all 100 each. Let's say there's some random keywords here. 
that would be 300, 400, 500. There's about 700 potential searches that you could um, turn up for on page one if you do your SEO right, just for your article that you've optimized, your one article that you've optimized for these search terms. And you'll imagine if you have four or five articles, you know, 10 articles, 20 articles, and you're, and you're just optimizing for these little search terms, uh, you, you know, you can really do some damage when it comes to making money. You can make some serious money doing it this way. And you can also, you know, when you're doing your titles, you want to add a few of these into the title. You want to add a few of these into the meta description and the SEO title and stuff and just optimize it for these little words. And so what I do is I send uh, off um, a text format to my article writer and I'll say, hey, this is my main keyword I want to use. And then I'll highlight, I'll put all these other keywords in it. I'll highlight words that he should be using. So I'll highlight that. I'll highlight that. And I'll highlight uh, this and he'll he'll do a whole article based on my highlighted words and this main keyword here and he'll write a good article about it okay so that's kind of how we do it we're, we're targeting low key low volume keywords but a lot of them in one article or one page now hopefully this kind of covers uh, you know what you guys have been asking me and I'll just you know we'll backtrack a bit so what I do is I put, I put a main keyword I put a main, I don't think I have one here. So we'll just go over it one more time, okay? I keep my main keyword, put it in my planner. Let's get rid of Moz here. Simple search for it. And then I want to get my ideas. I want to just get a whole bunch of random ones, you know, uh, sorry, that are kind of a low low volume. And you can also try to find ones that are trending, kind of, you know, these have had, uh, the, the search volumes doubled on this one in the last last month. So you, know, you want to use ones like that, this one not so much. Okay, so it's just a matter of going through and, and, and manually doing it, and it does take time, but this is how you do proper research. You, you can't really just type something into a, a program and it spits out something unique, because that's what everyone else is doing. See, like this has got some really good search volume from last month, and it's only 30 searches. But if you get a couple of sales out of it, then you're doing well. And I want to just re uh, go back on something. You know, people are going to say, Well, what about keyword competitiveness and all that? But it's not really accurate because if you use, I use four programs, uh, you know, Market Samurai, Longtail Pro, and a few others, and they all give me different readings every time. So one might give me 10, one might give me 20, one might give me uh, 15, one might give me 50. And, and you can't rely on that because they all bring in different, they all are uh, using different metrics. So the, the only way to really tell uh, from a keyword difficulty is to just use Mozbar and just um, study your competitors. That's that's the only way you can only just study everyone else that's in here, you know, and really dig deep. I mean, if, if I do a quick keyword difficulty on this, it's probably not going to load. 26. It's not too bad, but I, I don't really trust these, okay? So yeah, I hope that answered your questions and uh, there'll be some more videos coming soon. Stay tuned. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask and I'll just blast this video off to all you guys that ask me uh, how to do free keyword research. All you need is Google Google uh, Keyword Planner, a product, a few low keywords, uh, get them optimized. And I do want to say that you want to keep up, you still want to um, keep these because you, you you might want to use them uh, when you're doing your SEO for like anchor texts and stuff like that. So you want to keep these, okay? I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.